Hey, what's going on? I'm Will Button. This is DevOps for Developers, and we are jumping into this video, James Bond style, getting right to the action. So I know a lot of y'all are watching my channel, trying to figure out how to get the skills that you need to get into a DevOps career. So in this video, I'm going to give you 11 different projects that you can tackle on your own to build skills that will help you land a DevOps job. So I've got these 11 projects I've come up with, and I'm going to give them to you just right up front here. And if there's one that piques your interest, there probably will be. There are chapter links down below. You can just jump to that one, start in it, and then not have to um, listen to me ramble on. So the first project we're going to do is build a Linux server. The second one is do some load testing on a server. Third, build a database with high availability. The next one is deploy a static website to a CDN provider like um, CloudFront or uh, Cloudflare. The next project is to create a monitoring dashboard, so collecting metrics from all kinds of different places and visualizing that on a dashboard, set up complete with alerting on there as well for different thresholds. The project after that is to deploy a website or a web front end and an API server on Kubernetes. The next project is to build a CI CD pipeline that actually takes code from a repository and deploys it out to your servers. Then the project after that is going to be manipulating CSV files, which on the surface may not sound like a very DevOpsy thing to do, but trust me, you're going to spend a ton of time doing that. The project after that is provisioning AWS. So we're going to create an AWS account and then provision it out so that it has the resources our team needs on there. The one following that is to set up an Ansible playbook. So you're going to use Ansible to go out and modify the configuration of some servers that you're controlling. And then the final one is going to be set up an S3 and Lambda pipeline so that whenever a file appears in an Amazon S3 bucket, that triggers a Lambda function to take some sort of action on that file and produce an output. All right, project number one, go build a Linux server, homie. And don't you fucking dare head over to the Ubuntu website. When I say build a Linux system, I want you to build either a Gen 2 or an Arch Linux box. Now, there's a specific reason for this because Ubuntu, I don't have any problems with it. It's a great distribution. Same can be said for Debian or Red Hat or CentOS. All of those are fine. But by forcing you down the Gentoo or Arch Linux path, you're going to be forced to learn a whole lot about Linux that is automatically handled for you by some of those other distributions. It's going to be a slow and painful process, but you're going to learn so much from it, and I promise you won't regret it. So. Go build a system. If you don't have an old workstation laying around that you can use, you can get a Raspberry Pi for, I think, like 50 bucks, and you can install it on there. Or you can use uh, one of the cloud providers like Amazon or Azure or um, GCE. So if you do use Amazon, uh, make sure that you go and set up billing alerts so you don't get surprised by a bill at the end of the month. And I've got a video that I'll link here somewhere that's a refresher on how to do that. Uh, I believe Azure has a free tier where it's 100% free as in beer, so you don't have to worry about that. And I'm not really sure about Google's platform. I haven't used that in several years, so I don't know if they currently have a free tier that's going to work or not for you. Either way, go out and build a Linux system. Project number two, I want you to load test something. Now, this can be, um, you can load test your own workstation, whether it's a laptop or a desktop computer. You can load test the, uh, the server that you built if you um, did project number one and you built a server or if you have something that's available through your work or your current school environment, um, you know, you're looking for something that's like a, a website that you can load test. And there's a couple of different tools I'm going to steer you towards for doing this. Uh, one is JMeter. JMeter is fine. It's a great tool for doing that. 
Another one is Gatlin.io or Gatling.io, like the Gatling gun. That's a really good one that I've used in the past. And also Locust.io um, is another great one as well. The benefits to Locust is it's written in Python. So it's a good chance for you to brush up or learn some Python skills that will, without a doubt, serve you well throughout your career. But what you wanna do is just find something you can load test and then load test it and see if you can figure out where the performance bottlenecks are on that. And then how do you improve upon that? All right, project number three, set up a database with high availability. And I don't really care which database you use. You can use Postgres or MySQL or MongoDB, even though everybody loves to hate on MongoDB, whatever. The point here is I want you to build multiple servers, install a database platform on those, and then set up high availability, and then kill one of the servers and watch your traffic automatically and seamlessly route over to the other node. This is something that you're gonna do a lot of in, in, um, in DevOps. And now a lot of times with uh, cloud providers like Amazon, you can just click the high availability checkbox and it will do it for you. But this is still a great exercise to go through and understand how it works under the hood because when it doesn't work or when it does happen, it'll give you that foundational knowledge to understand what's going on and simplify your troubleshooting process. Okay, so project number four is to deploy a static HTML site or a single page application to a CDN provider like cloud formation or not cloud formation like CloudFront or cloudflare and now for bonus points on this because that seems pretty straightforward right you take the html you dump it out on cdn point a dns record to it and away you go the bonus part of this is figure out how to get your clients to get updates for example all of these html sites or single page applications use javascript and that JavaScript gets downloaded to the client and executes in the browser. So whenever your software engineering team deploys a new version of the JavaScript out to CDN, how do you tell someone's browser, wherever they happen to be, to get that updated JavaScript? It's a tricky problem. It'll be well worth you spending some time to figure it out. Okay, project number five, build a dashboard. Now you can use um, something like Grafana to build a dashboard, or you can use Kibana from the Elk stack. Doesn't really matter. The thing that I want you to do here is find a source of data that you can display on a dashboard that updates in real time, and then also identify some thresholds that you can use to trigger alerts in there. This is a huge part of what we do in DevOps, and that's monitoring, visualizing, data to understand the state of our environment and identify when things are not behaving as they're expected to be. All right, project number six, find yourself an application that has a web UI and an API server, right? And you can search out on Google for these like starter templates and stuff like that because the code's not really the important thing here. The important thing is I want you to deploy this on Kubernetes. Right, So you'll create the Kubernetes manifest that describes how this should be running, build the Docker containers, and actually launch it on Kubernetes. And even if you don't end up using Kubernetes in your job, it's still a good exercise because it forces you to think about how to compartmentalize your applications and get them from that code state to a deployed state. Now that kind of tees up our next project, which is build a CI CD pipeline. So you can take a couple of these different projects, like the first project you did of building a Linux server, and then this previous project of deploying an application on Kubernetes, and tie that in with the CI CD pipeline here, so that you build this complete workflow from checking in code into a Git repository to trigger running your tests, triggering a build, building an output artifact, whether that's a Docker container or an application library, and then deploying that out to your server or your runtime environment, wherever that happens to be. So all of those loop together or all of those tie together, right? But I still want you to do each one independently and not try to take on 
too much of this because you'll just create a lot of problems and end up getting frustrated and end up quitting, right? So start with the basics and then build foundational skills on top of that. Okay, so our next one is gonna to be to provision an AWS account or Azure or GCE, whatever you want to focus on. But the key thing here is to go to the website, create the account, and then start building out the components, perhaps even the components that you've built from other parts of this project. You know, How do you launch a server in that environment? How do you set up security so that no one else can launch a server, but members of your team can access that server? How do you do CI CD in it? You know, and set all of those things up just to get familiar with the cloud environment. And your first pass into this, it's totally okay to just log into their website and point and click your way to success. But then once you've done that and you kind of got a feel for it, I want you to take a step back and say, what did I just do? How can I recreate that? And if you pointed and clicked stuff, you really can't recreate that. You can make a best effort, but you can't guarantee the end result will be the same. And so that's gonna lead you into your configuration management and take you down a path of using something like Terraform or Ansible to set this account up exactly the way that you want it and then run that at periodic times in the future to guarantee that that's still the way that it's configured. So our next task is gonna to be to create an Ansible playbook. And a really good way to get started on this one is if you did the first project of building a Linux server, uh, especially if you built it in a cloud environment, just go delete it. Go delete that server and now recreate it. It's gonna be challenging, right? Just like I was just talking about in the AWS section prior to this, you've got a lot of stuff to remember how you did it, or you can use a tool like Ansible that does all of that work for you. And that's really where this starts getting into the automation and configuration management side of DevOps. So a lot of these projects leading up to this point were just building foundational knowledge so that you can feel the pain of not having a tool like Terraform or Ansible. And so in this project, grab a tool like Ansible, you know what steps need to be taken because you've done them manually and figure out how to take those steps in Ansible. Okay, so our last project is gonna be to build an S3 Lambda integration. So you're gonna set up an S3 bucket in AWS and then configure it so that whenever a file is added to that bucket, it invokes a Lambda function. And it really doesn't matter what the Lambda function does. You can um, read the file and just print out some value in it, or you can use the Lambda function to move it to a different bucket or whatever. It doesn't really matter. The key thing here is that serverless is really, really common in our environment these days. And so this is like your first step into a serverless type environment and then, um, using these triggered actions like event A happens and that triggers event B and then event B triggers event C and it's this automated pipeline execution environment, right? So we're used to pipelines for CI, CD and pipelines for data processing and stuff. And with serverless, we get into this pipeline model of that's actually how the application operates. And so this will be a good place for you to spend some time getting familiar with that and understanding what your different options are and how to make all of that work together. Okay, so there you go, 11 different projects that you can take on to build your DevOps skills. And now I know a lot of those I was pretty vague on and I was intentionally vague because my thought process here is to just give you like a task and have you start doing it and then go, oh wait, how do I do this? And then you go learn that and you come back and you apply that and then you make it to the next step and you're like, well, damn, I don't know how to do that either. So then you go and learn that. And so all of these are kind of set up so that they're manageable. You know, you can accomplish all of these without becoming an expert in a bunch of different areas. But at the same time, each one is going to take you off in different paths to build out some foundational skills or some, yeah, some foundational skills that you're gonna need in a DevOps environment. So hope you found that helpful. Um, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and I'll see y'all in the next video.